Hello and a warm welcome to our Heart of Westmoreland Mission Community Service on this the 11th of October. Our service today is based on the theme of God's abundance and in this time of autumn we see that all around us. 1 John 3 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. I love that word lavished. It's got a richness, a, a, abundance, a joy about it. And when it's connected to the phrase, see what great love the Father has given to us, then it reminds us that we are God's children and our God is a God of abundance. Our call to worship today is taken from the Iona community, Gather Us In. Gather us in the lost and the lonely, the broken and breaking, the tired and the aching, who long for the nourishment found at your feast. Gather us in the done and the doubting, the wishing and wondering, the puzzled and pondering, who long for the company found at your feast. Gather us in the proud and pretentious, the sure and superior, the never inferior, who long for the levelling found at your feast. Gather us in the bright and the bustling, the stirrers and shakers, the kind laughter makers, who long for the deeper joys found at your feast. Gather us in from corners or limelight, from mansion or campsite, from fears and obsession, from tears and depression, from untold excesses to treasured successes, to meet, to eat, to be given a seat, to be offered the vine, the new wine, and become like the least, and be found at the feast. Gather us in. God gathers us in today, into his presence, to worship him. He blesses us with a rich abundance, and our opening hymn is called Sing of the Lord's Goodness, and it reminds us of the words, Come to the Lord of goodness. We come to worship him today.
The hymn we've just listened to reminds us of the wonder of God's grace. The abundance of his love. In verse 2, that line, the one bread he has broken, reminding us of Christ's sacrifice for us. We come to God now in prayer. Let us be still as we reflect on the abundance of God's grace given in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty and abundant God, we worship you this morning. We love you because you first loved us. We cannot count all our blessings and your goodness can never be exhausted. On your power our lives depend and least of us flourishes under your loving care. In the name of your Son, you hear the quietest of our prayers by the help of your Holy Spirit. Our requests, unuttered or expressed, reach the throne of grace in heaven. You assure us of your forgiveness. You nourish us with your abundant grace. You surround us with a cloud of witnesses that encourage us as we journey with you. You make us brave and give us strength as we look to Jesus Christ, the pioneer of our faith and the author of our salvation. And you show us, Lord God, quiet signs of affection and love in those around us. We glimpse little signs of yourself in the world around us. And Father, we thank you for the abundance of your love, your grace and your mercy. So Heavenly Father, we praise you and give you the glory for your love and grace to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now we come to our prayer of confession. Let us pray. O God of life, eternity cannot hold, nor can our little words express the magnificence of your glory and kindness. Yet in the space of our small hearts and in the silence, you are there amongst us. O God of life, grant us forgiveness for our careless thoughts, our thoughtless deeds, our empty speech, our selfish ways. Forgive us, Lord, the false desires and the actions which do not bring blessing and hope. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we go our own way in our own strength. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we do not think of you nor honour you in what we say and do. Abundant God, we rely on your grace. And now, Heavenly Father, we pray for forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ. We offer ourselves before you and say, Lord, we are truly sorry. And we find hope in your love and forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ. And we hear his words of grace, your sins are forgiven in my name. And Heavenly Father, we are truly grateful. Amen. As we reflect on God's abundance, we hear David's personal words in Psalm 23, where he speaks of the Lord who is his shepherd, that he shall want for nothing, that his cup runs over, and that he longs for that day when he will spend eternity with you. Psalm 23 is read for us this day by Jackie Betts. Reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you, Jackie, for the reading of Psalm 23. I'm going to reflect for a moment or two on the Lord is my shepherd. David's opening statement, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
God is the shepherd of his soul and there'll be nothing he needs. God is the personal shepherd who is there for him all the time. I shall not want. What a statement for us. There's nothing I need for God watches over me wherever I am, wherever I go. Here in the Eden Valley and Loon Valley, everyone knows the constant care that a shepherd will take over his sheep. Each one needs to be sure of its comfort and care. Each one's known by sight and for some of the shepherds around here, known by name. We receive constant care from God, whether we know it or not. And David paints a picture of abundance, of a God who cares for us constantly. His eye is upon us to watch over us and to keep us safe. God is the one who leads, restores and guides. And all of this is for his glory. David reminds us that God leads us not only through life and from life to death, but from there into eternity in this psalm. We can be anxious even fearful. We share that with sheep. But David says, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Your rod and staff are there. They are my protection and guide. Because they're there, they reassure me of your constant presence and love. David moves on in his words to a banquet table set before us where our needs are satisfied, where we are anointed with oil, where we see that as a symbol of God's grace. And in the Middle East, that's what would happen. The guest will be anointed with oil and clothed in a robe provided by the host. For us, that robe provided is through Jesus Christ, through his blood shed for us. It is a robe of righteousness. And in the Middle East, there's another tradition too. The cup is taken as you arrive and the host comes and fills it fills it up to flowing and there it is kept a symbol of being welcome the host through the night will continue to top up your cup and it's a sign that you're welcome to stay when the host gets bored of you of course the cup runs dry and that is a silent sign a symbol of it's time to go but notice what David says David says my cup runneth over. The host keeps pouring until the wine flows over the edge of the cup and across the table onto the floor. It's a symbol of lasting friendship, of eternal friendship that transfer goes from life and death and beyond. A sign of friendship that God wants us to be in his presence forever. David says, my cup overflows an abundance of life. And he goes on to say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So assured is he in his relationship with God, his Lord and Saviour, that he can say confidently, the abundance that I've received will last for all of my life. And we remember what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. When he poured out his love his life in his death for us. We take wine and we drink and we do it as a symbol, as a remembrance of Christ's sacrifice for us. We take and eat bread in a remembrance that his body was broken for us. God offers us an abundance. So in that abundance of love, in these times where we may fear and worry, God is with us. Let us give thanks and rejoice and praise God for what God has done, for his mercy has transformed our lives. His love leads us on and we are safe in his hands, held by him. We have a grace that is sufficient for all, a saviour who died for all, signs of abundance and a shepherd that asks us to lead others to his side to know him for we are the sheep for whom the shepherd died our God of abundance and love died for us and for them the
going to hear now from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22. Jesus is teaching in the temple. This is the third parable he teaches on this day. And he begins by saying, the kingdom of God is like... And here Jesus teaches about a king who offers a wedding feast. How he provides everything that is needed out of the abundance of his love, the food, the clothes. Everything is provided for those who come. And an invitation is sent out to all when the ones who are invited refuse. So here we find God calling us. And it says, go out onto the streets and call everyone, the good and the bad. Let's listen to these words now as Heather reads them to us. The reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22 and verses 1 to 14. The parable of the wedding banquet. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, tell those who have been invited that I've prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatted cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, ill-treated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could, both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, How did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Amen. Thank you, Heather, for reading those words from the Gospel for us today. We're going to reflect for a moment or two on what they mean. Come, all ye vagabonds, is a modern chorus, a modern song that speaks of the words that Jesus tells in this parable, of God's kingdom and how it comes. It talks about the poor and the peasants being brought in, the lost and the lonely called in. Jesus here speaks to a mixed audience, a group of people gathered in the temple court in Jerusalem. The powerful, the privileged would have been there. The leaders, the Pharisees, all of those who held positions of power would understand as he told the story, but also gathered there with the poor, the needy, the lost, the lonely, gathered around to hear Jesus teaching on this, the Tuesday of Holy Week. Jesus comes into the temple court and tells three parables and here in the third one he talks about the king who holds a wedding feast for his son. No one who listens to Jesus' words can be in any doubt what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about God and God's outreach. The servants who were sent, who were ill-treated, killed and just not listened to, are the ones who brought the message of God to the people of Israel. They've been rejected and now God is doing a new thing. God has decided to send out his message to all the people, the good and the bad, those on the streets, on the corners. They're all invited to come. The servants, that's us, are sent out with a message of welcome, an urgent message to a feast that is already prepared, already set up. We're invited to come and we come as we are. 
And in the abundance of the love, God invites us into that feast. God prepares a way for us in Jesus Christ. In him we're reclothed in righteousness so we can wear robes fit for that feast. The table is set and we hear that the entire hall is filled to capacity. God has called everyone in. As the king walks into this less than star-studded lineup of guests, he notices one man who is not wearing the robes provided. An insult to the king. How can we stand in the holy presence of God without the blood of Jesus covering us? So the king has him thrown out. And then those that are there enter into the banquet, that feast in the kingdom of God. A glorious call to each one of us to share the good news of Jesus Christ. So much more could be said, but God's invitation is to us all. If you haven't opened your heart to Jesus today, this is the call. Come to the wedding feast, all's prepared in Jesus Christ. Come and worship him and offer yourself to God in Jesus' name. Some words from the Iona community. Among the poor, among the proud, among the persecuted, among the privileged, Christ is coming to make all things new. In the private house, in the public place, in the wedding feast, in the judgment hall, Christ is coming to make all things new. With a gentle touch, with an angry word, with a clear conscience of burning love, Christ is coming to make all things new. That the kingdom might come, that the world might believe, that the powerful may stumble, that the hidden might be seen, Christ is coming to make all things new. Within us, without us, behind us and before us, in this place, in every place, in this time and for all time, Christ is coming to make all things new. We come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Loving Father, when we think of that King inviting people to the wedding feast of his Son, we think again of your precious invitation to each one of us to be part of your kingdom. Lord, increase our awareness of your longing and love for all people. Help us to have that same longing for people that you do, that they may know the wonder of your love, your friendship and your grace. Help us to share what we know of you, Jesus Christ, in our words and deeds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring before you now the names of people we know who have no experience of that love and those who knew that love and now are far away from you. Lord, help us to speak to them. Speak to them with sincerity, kindness and love. Give us what we need to be gentle evangelists and Lord, fill our mouths with simple words of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we think of Jesus laying hands upon the sick and suffering, bringing hope and healing, and Lord, so many in the world need that at this moment. We pray for an end to the pandemic, for a new beginning for this world. Fill your people, Lord, with a spirit of love and service that we may go in your name and spread your word of hope. We pray for your healing touch upon those amongst us who are unwell those who need healing, those who are struggling with mental health and those who fear isolation at this time. Lord God, we pray that you would bless them and bring healing and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the young people in our communities. May they know about your love. We pray for them at school and the new ways of working. For those at universities, some of whom have the pandemic, those who are isolating. Father in heaven, we pray for them. We pray for those whose futures have been changed by all that has happened and those still struggling to come to terms with a new way of working. Bless the teachers and carers. Be with those who support them. 
and Lord bless our families, draw them together in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are on the front line, those who see a new wave coming and work in the NHS, in frontline jobs, in caring, in social care, those doctors and nurses, and those who provide for our needs. We pray for our farmers and for those around us who need that love and grace and our prayers at this time. Pray, Lord, for them. You bless them in this winter time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray for our leaders, for the world leaders, the Queen, and the leaders of nations. Guide them in the ways of truth, justice, peace, and love. We pray for those who are refugees, those who are travelling, seeking a place to rest. Lord, they find their rest in you. May we be ambassadors of that love and hope to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we ask this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and evermore. Amen. We've gathered together for worship. We've sung our hymns, we rejoiced that Jesus is our Lord and King. 
we've thought about the abundance of God's love, take some time to reflect on that. Perhaps even listen to that song about vagabonds. We are called as God's servants to tell on the street corners the good news of Christ's love. Go in the richness of his love, go in the abundance of his grace. Go renewed in the spirit to love and serve Jesus Christ this day. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon us and be with us now and forevermore in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this week, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for our service on the heart of Westmoreland, reflecting on the abundance of God's love and grace. A safe journey this week. And we pray that you'll be able to join us once again, or perhaps look at the services already that have been recorded. Pray that your anointing and your peace will be upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>